guys, good morning. Happy Friday. Made it through another week. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I haven't seen you for such a long time. I was really busy with telly last week, so you've had Kitty for the last um, maybe four or five days or so. <clears throat> so hope you had fun. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to um, join into many of the videos because I've been at the studios. Um, so just the timing was really rubbish. I couldn't kind of hop on and, uh, and, and comment to any of them. But I've seen you all over the last couple of days. So that's been really nice. Hope you've been having fun. Hi, good morning, Jan. Morning, Helen. Um, so I'm going to show you something really fun today. We're going to be working with ceramic beads. Now, these are absolutely beautiful. We've got loads of different colours of them. Now, they are quite a large bead. So I think a lot of the time people are really stuck with best ways to showcase them. Bit too big for full necklaces, bit too big for a bracelet. But I'm going to show you today that we're going to make multifunctional necklaces out of them. So... Oh, Dorothy's saying she loved my shows this week. Thank you so much. Good morning, Judith. Yeah, it was a really busy one. Morning, Leslie. Hi, Francis. So what I'm going to show you is um, multifunctional necklaces. So I'm going to teach you a sliding knot. So I've got um, a necklace here that I've made using the ceramic bead. I've added it onto a wrapped loop and I've added one of these beautiful tassel caps. And I'm going to show you those as we go on. But if you have a look at the clasp, you can actually pull it and then have a shorter necklace. You might not want that with um, a tassel. Um, pulled it a bit too tight. Um, so with your um, tassels, I guess if you were wearing a round neck, a high necked t-shirt, that's going to give you a really lovely finish. We just tighten that one up. So you can have it as a short necklace, which looks really lovely. Or you then just simply pull the clasp and the slides along. And then you've got a really long lariat necklace as well. So it's going to adapt for your outfit. It's going to adapt for the neckline and it's going to be something really multifunctional. Um, I'm going to say good morning to all of you before I turn you down. Oh, good morning from Holland. Hi, good morning, Lords, Debbie, Jean, nice to see you and you too. Hi, LJ, Charlotte from Hawaii. Aloha, got you here again. Um, good morning, Edward, Margaret, Jenny, Lynn. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Camille. Nice day for a change. Oh, it's not here yet, um, but I think we have a little bit of a heat wave coming. Fingers crossed. Um, not quite yet. Um, it's not, it's just stopped raining. It was raining all morning, so it's only just stopped now. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna turn you down, let you have a little look at some of the things that are on offer today, including the ceramic beads. And um, then we'll get cracking with our sliding knots. Okay, so let me turn you down. Right, some of the bits that we've got going on for you today. If you pop on to the Totally Beads website, just down on the side you've got the categories list. Da, da, da. Facebook tutorials. So here you will find all of the offers, all of the videos and everything that we have been working on. Today's going to be the sliding knot necklace. Now the ceramic beads, if you have a look, they are a fantastic size. They've got the most beautiful colourings to them and gorgeous noise as well. Um, they're beautifully cold on the skin, so it's really lovely um, to wear. And they've got a great weight to them. So with pendants like the one that I am wearing, um, of course, they're going to look absolutely beautiful. You can hear them. They have a great sound to them. Now, these are all on offer down to £3.15 for the whole strand. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna make, um, I've, well, I've already made my pendant necklace. I'm gonna make another one using just three of our beads. So I would be looking at getting four to five necklaces, if not more, because of course, if you're only going to do your pendants, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you can even make 12 necklaces out of them with your pendants. So I think if you are selling your bits and pieces, be beads like these, <coughs> excuse me, as a large feature, are well worth investing in. Well, I say investing in, £3.15. Um, because once you um, make statement necklaces, you want something that is really going to... Be careful how you slay, say that sliding knot necklace. Oh, did I say something naughty? Sorry. <laughs> I have a tendency of doing that. Um, 
Okay, so yes, £3.15, it's a fantastic price for them. A uh, couple of other bits and pieces. Um, so we've got the um, discs as well. So these ones are actually classed as chips. I'm not sure why, because they're certainly not a chip um, in, in terms of a bead shape or size. Um, they're more like a nugget. Um, so in the um, actual shape that you have, um, they're going to give you that sort of um, almost oval finish as well. And then they are um, the discs. So the discs around, you can have them in the same colours, which means you could also mix and match some of those as well. And then the little tassel caps. So there are three of them. I've got the larger one on my necklace. Um, it's 50 pence which I think is just amazing value for money I'll take mine off in a minute and show you and then we have two smaller ones as well if you don't fancy too much of a feature um, or maybe you want to make matching pair of earrings you could use your larger 16 millimeter tassel in your necklace and you could use um, two smaller ones for um, your earrings they're only 30 pence each so 60 pence for a pair of earrings oh and then the main component how can I forget um, I'm using the rat tail cord um, it's a beautiful satin finish um, and you will have all different colors as well you've got 270 meters in there which I think is phenomenal value for money and as the days go on um, we are going to use these more and more so if you like macrame and things like that um, then it'll be fantastic for you oh Doris says they look like toffee sweets that you're right they do so the Rattel cord will give you a beautiful soft finish um, as you can see that sliding clasp is just going to move really beautifully down that cord on either side like so and then you've got your lovely pendant. So I've used um, wire to wrap this on, which I'll show you how to do. And then this is the larger tassel. I haven't actually finished it. I've left this so that I could show you the rest of it. Um, but this is the larger one. I've got the smaller one somewhere as well. I'll show you in a minute. Um, you also have them in silver and gold and I think they'd be beautiful for tassel earrings. Okay, so I am going to start off by creating this middle component for our pendant necklace and then I'm actually going to show you how to create a completely different necklace. I've used size 11 seed beads down on the tassels and I've finished with one of my um, three millimeter pearls. So it's given me um, just that little bit of detail. In terms of proportion, if you are adding tassels onto things, make sure that your tassels are at least the same size and length as your pendant so I just measured them up so that I had that same level of interest that way your proportions are going to look perfect okay so let's first of all prep some of our bits and pieces now over the last few days I've been showing you um, lots of rings lots of wire wrapped rings we've been doing um, various different things and so hopefully you have managed to get hold of um, some of your wires I'm just looking for one of my 0.8 wires which um, ah, here we go let's do it in rose gold because that's just the one I've got to hand um, the rest is all in the living room because I was using it last night. Okay, so I'm going to create a wrapped loop so that we can attach our pendant onto it. Bear, bear with me one second, guys. Hang on, I've just got to grab my tools. Sorry. I've got them here somewhere. Oh, I'm so silly. They're right behind my head. Here we go. I've got stuff everywhere. I'm trying to reorganise the study. Um, we're actually having a new floor fitted in a couple of weeks and I need to take everything out, which makes me want to cry, um, and then put everything back in. So I'm trying to get as organised as I can, but in doing that, <laughs> it's just mayhem. Okay, so I'm going to take my um, 0.8 millimetre wire and I'm going to create a wrapped loop. So I'm going to bring this around like so, and I've gone reasonably far down my pliers so that I can create um, quite a sizable loop and I'm then just going to neaten up and straighten one of those so that I get an eye just like an eye pin. Now it's at this point that you would connect it onto for example your cord um, or your um, tassel cap, where is it, here we go, 
So you would thread that in at this point because what we're going to do is actually secure this on with a wrapped loop. So it means that no matter how much strain or stress the necklace is under, it's great for doing this with earrings as well because of course they have a lot of movement. Um, it doesn't matter kind of how much stress it's under, you're always going to have that secure loop. So if you've got any very heavy beads, then this is a great way to be able to secure them on. Okay, so now that I've got that loop and that is attached to my tassel cap, I'm just going to hold that flat with my pliers and that's so that my loop stays in exactly the right position and I don't move it. And then I'm going to take the wire and I'm just going to wrap that around that very middle piece of cord. Probably two would do this. I don't think we're going to need to do much more. You can pinch that together and then you can trim as near to the main body of it as you can. Okay, and that's your wrapped loop. So that's gonna be super secure. Now you could then put that directly onto your ceramic bead. But can you see that because the ceramic bead actually has quite a large hole, my wire disappears into there. So what I decided to do was make some little end caps, if you like, some little stoppers. I've just made these little circles using five of my rondelles. And again, we've had these bundles really readily available, so I'm sure you have lots of these beads in your stash. I just made them using rose gold. Now there's a surprise. <laughs> it's actually the only one I had to hand. I wouldn't put rose gold with this ordinarily. I would definitely put silver or gold, but hey-ho, I'll change it once we're finished. Um, and then you've got all five of your little rondelles in there. That is going to give you a little stopper. And what that will do is prevent your large hole bead from disappearing into the wire. I just need to neaten that one up, straighten it up ever so slightly. Okay, so that will then act as a little stopper, but it gives you that great level of interest as well. It's just pulling in some of those colours. I've got one to go on the top and one to go onto the bottom, like so. And we'll do a wrapped loop at the top as well. So this is a really nice way of um, creating some interest in your ceramic bead, making a pendant out of it and making a feature out of just one. I can't remember how many we said on there, but it's only £3.15 uh, for the strand, which means that it's going to be amazing value for money if this was all you were going to do from them. So again, creating that loop up at the top. Once you have that perfectly formed loop, you can then just hold that, take your wire, and wrap it around that main body. And then what I'm gonna do is just go down far enough so that it will also sit those beads nice and neatly in place so there isn't any movement in there. And then you can cut that off. So as you can see, the rose gold wire doesn't go well with it, but never thought I'd say rose wire doesn't go well. Um, I, would, I would add silver so that um, it matched the bottom, or of course you could add gold which still looks lovely with the grey as well. Now that would be ready to then thread onto um, your cord. You want it sideways so that it will hang in the right direction. Add that on and you're ready to add your tassels onto the bottom. Now with your tassel caps, they have um, a lovely little detail on them, beautiful sort of antique silver or gold, and they have these little circles all the way around the bottom. And this is what I was using. So they're not hollow through the middle, it is a cap. Um, I was using the uh, circles to actually create little tassels and all I was doing to create that is adding on my thread and you come up through one side through one side of your hole so up from the base up to the top like so and then you string on your beads so I've used size 11 beads here you string on your beads all the way down to the bottom Add on a pearl and miss it and come back up through all of your seed beads and come through in the opposite direction. So from this case, I came back to forward. So I would go front to back and that would secure it in place. Move along to the next hole and you're ready to add your next tassel. So it is going to give you some little visible thread along here. So as you can see, it's my moves along left and right and then down to the bottom as well. But it's giving you a really lovely detail like so. And then um, once you've finished all of those, we'll just do a half hitch to secure. So you've seen me do this lots and lots of times. It's just a beautiful way of being able. <laughs> Dorothy says, great for belly dancing lessons. Absolutely. If you're going to adorn yourself for belly dancing, then when, what better way than with these tassels? 
maybe I need to take up the glasses just so I can get more wear out of my necklace. Okay, so that's how you can use your tassel caps to create uh, your lovely tassel necklace. And then with your sliding knots, and this is what I'm going to show you now, you can create multifunctional necklaces that will be long or short, uh, depending on the tops and the necklines that you're wearing. So first of all, um, I'm going to use, let's use our ceramic beads because I want to show you that I could get multiple necklaces out of just one strand. So I have used uh, two now, so we've effectively made two pendants. I'm going to use three in this one. I've got three, another three. So um, two, three, four. I could actually make six necklaces out of just this one strand. Now, I normally tell you, I'm actually going to use four, I normally tell you to use um, an odd number of beads for necklaces, but in this case, with this shape of bead, um, I am going to, how do you make the tassels look like there are no holes, I'm, I'm guessing? Um, so what you could then do up on the top is you can actually... Um, run your beads along the outside so you could just give it a little halo along the outside so if you come up through the hole pick up a bead and go back down through the hole move along up through the hole pick up a bead down through the hole and what that will do is actually just sit a bead on top of all of those holes and that will hide it if i can find my hang on all right i've got my needle i'll show you and then that way um you can actually then Give it a little halo just around the outside and it will hide those holes for you. Anybody else hold their breath while they're threading a needle? Who knows why I do that? Right, my seed beads. So you could use seed beads, you could use um, any of your crystals as well if you wanted to give it a larger halo, that would work. Take your needle and thread up through the hole, pick up a bead, move that down towards the hole, and then miss the bead, but go back through the hole. And when you pull that tightly, can you see that that is going to sit a bead just on the outside, and that will actually hide that hole. Come up through the center, pick up a bead, go back down through the hole, And that's going to fill that in as well. So it will give you a lovely little halo all the way around. And it will also completely disguise those holes. Um, every time, Sarah, until I scream when it won't go through. Oh, holding your breath. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it can be frustrating, can't it? Um, could the tassels be made of chain? Absolutely. Kitty also did. Um, <laughs> Marion says she also sticks her tongue out. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Um, the concentration... Uh, the concentration look, isn't it? Um, Kitty has also done a video all on tassels. So if you would like to add them out of chain, you could also bead them out of larger crystals. You can do anything with them. It's just going to balance out the heaviness of the ceramic beads. Okay, so I normally tell you to use... Um, an odd number of beads for necklaces. And I'm gonna break that rule today and I'm gonna use an even amount. Naughty, naughty me, I know. But it's because of the shape of these beads. So, because they are more of a nugget shape, um, they don't actually sit in the same direction. So you can see that uh, one side is larger than the other. And so if you were gonna use them, I personally don't like just threading them on because I don't think it quite looks right. They, they sort of, um, look like the wrong shape. So rather than using five of them, I'm actually gonna angle these in towards each other. So I have the two smaller ends touching each other on this side. And for that interest on the, um, the graduation of the necklace, I'm gonna use the larger ends and butt those up against the larger ends as well. And then we're gonna put this onto our rat tail. So I normally, for a lariat, and I'm doing my sliding clasp, I would say you would need about a meter. So just cut that from the spool and we're going to thread these directly on and then we will knot into position. Now with the ceramic beads, um, they go on beautifully, but if you do get your cord stuck in the middle at all, can you see I'm just giving it a little twist? Twist your cord in there 
to get it through. Okay, so it is simple to thread them on. We're gonna start with just one of these. I'm gonna bring this down, so I'm halving my... <laughs> Jax is saying, oh, you rebel. I know, that's about as naughty as I get, isn't it? <laughs> Oh dear. So what I'm going to do is actually um, tie a knot to position this bead. So I'm just going to tie an overhand knot, which is going to be really nice and simple for your first one. Because of course your positioning isn't going to matter too much, okay? So we'll just do one overhand knot. Now for this one, I'm doing very much more of a casual look because my tassel one, I think, um, could be reasonably dressy. It's a bit fancy, so let's go for something a little bit plainer. So I'm going to position a knot on each side of these ceramics. Not only so that uh, we need a group photo of us threading a needle, that would be hilarious. <laughs> That really would be great. Um, oh, that's very funny. All our concentration faces. We could do a montage of it all, couldn't we? <laughs> I love that. Um, Jittle, hi, good morning, Jittle. Oh, my, I love big feature beads and statement necklaces. May have to get some of these beauties. Yeah, I do think you would really love these. Um, would you wire wrap these ceramic beads? Oh, absolutely, Lorna. Um, especially some of the beautiful colour ones. You can see you get that gorgeous depth where they have the glaze on them. Um, especially in the green as well. You know me, I wear a lot of car keys and greens and things like that. So some of these as wire wrapped would be absolutely beautiful and hopefully you got some good wire bundles the other week as well. Okay, so I want to tie this bead in position. So I want to tie my knot so that it will go on exactly the right side, just like we were when we were knotting pearls a few weeks ago. But with this one, I've just tied my overhand knot. I'm not gonna bother putting um, a needle in it because my thread is thick enough to be able to maneuver myself. So I'm just going to take uh, three of my fingers and this will pull the excess. With my index finger and my thumb, and can you see with my other hand, I've positioned my bead so that it's right up close to that first knot. With my index finger and my thumb, I'm gonna squeeze and push that knot down, and you'll see my three fingers in the background just pulling through that excess. By wringing that through and pushing it down towards the bead, you will get a perfect positioned bead with a knot on either side, okay? So it's super, super simple. And we're going to do, so that was a larger side of the bead. So we'll put a larger one on here. And again, where it's positioned, pushing that right down, tying your knot. So just a simple overhand knot, holding them in place so that it doesn't move. There's nothing more annoying than concentrating on one knot and realising you left a gap at the other side. <laughs> LJ says, I think we all need to spam the Totally Beads Facebook page later with concentration faces. Oh, absolutely. So we've got our Totally Handmade uh, by Totally Beads um, group. I think that would be absolutely brilliant. And I think I think Kitty's watching this morning. Um, if she's not, it's going to be even funnier because she'll have no idea what's going on. <laughs> we should just send it all through. That would be fantastic. Okay, so because it's my uh, narrower end of the bead, I'm bringing in my narrower side of this one, holding that into place and pulling this through. Now, if you wanted to make those little connectors, those little spacer beads that I did with something like a crystal, then you could also interspace um, these with those as well, just to give it a little bit more. Oh, Kitty is here. <laughs> I'm not sure what Kitty's concentration face is. I know I hold my breath, I'll probably stick my tongue out as well. Mm, not sure what Kitty does. Don't think I've seen her stick her tongue out. Um, okay, so I'm also then going to do this one on the other side as well. Oh no, this one's gonna go on this side so that we can graduate out. Let's pop this one in. Oh, Leanne's saying these look like my worry stones. Yeah, you can. Actually, do you know what? They would be brilliant for that as well. What about having them as a little gift? You could make like a little um, handbag charm out of them. So I think worry stones, you just keep in your hand, don't you? And you just give them a little rub. It's meant to sort of ground you, give you that texture and feeling, that sensation. These are actually perfect for that because they also have an indent through the centre as well. I think I frown, says Dorothy. Looks nice as a three. Yes, it does. You could use that as well. Um, for me, it's just the, the direction of the stone. And I'm just being totally OCD. Um, it's just the shape of the stone because they're not regular. I like to move them around a little bit. Okay, so this will be my last one. And then we're going to get on to the all-important sliding clasp. 
which I'm hoping will be really helpful for you in so many different makes. Now today is a bit more of a day wear with your ceramic beads. I've shown you these two necklaces, very different, and I'll pop them both on in a minute so that you can see the difference. Tomorrow, I'm also gonna be using Rattel Cord, um, it's a lot thinner, so different thickness. Today I'm using the 2.5 millimeter. Tomorrow I'm gonna to use crystals and I'm gonna show you a completely different sliding clasp. And um, Diane says, are they heavy? Um, as a full strand, yes, but only because you have so many of them, which is why I probably wouldn't use more than seven in a necklace perhaps. Um, they are a nice weight to be able to wear. You can see that the weight of them just allows them to hang beautifully. It's not going to be heavy um, to wear. If you're worried about that, then stick to the pendant and have only one, uh, which would be um, a good weight to be able to hang on your neck. Okay, so a sliding clasp. I've got my beads down at the bottom here. Up at the top here, I'm going to cross over my beads. Now, this is exactly the same for... Um, bracelets, um, for necklaces. You can use this knot in so many ways. And I'm going to bring it up nice and close to you. So I'm going to take, this is my uh, crossed over strand. Okay, so I've crossed these over to give me my necklace shape. Again, like I said, it could also be your bracelet shape. I'm going to take my strand, which is up at the top here. So this is my left strand that's crossed over. I'm going to loop that around, just give myself a little bit more cord. I'm going to loop it around and over the thread that is running here. So can you see that is underneath my loop? I've crossed up and over. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it around. So I'm just going to shrink down that loop a little bit. Did it oversize to show you? I'm going to take this cord and I'm going to wrap it around the back once, working up towards my knot again, twice, and then I'm going to pull that through here. Now, if you only leave a short gap, then use your pliers, grab hold of that and pull through. Probably should have done three there, but this will do. And then I'm going to pull that nice and tightly. So not only am I pushing the knot down on this side, but I'm also pulling that cord through. And now that will move up and down that piece of cord. Okay, thank you, Earl. So with your other side, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna take our strand, Curly, shush now. We're gonna take our strand, I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit closer. Now this is super, super long. Um, you wouldn't need it so um, as long as this, but we'll go with it. Um, so I'm gonna, again, create that loop, bring the cord underneath, wrap it over once, Twice. I think I only did two on this one, didn't I? Up through that loop, grabbing that tail, pulling it through. You can do it with your hands as well, I'm sure, but I just find it easier to do with... Um... Great, much better than I've ever been shown before. Oh, thank you, Diane. Oh, Camille's saying, good morning, Curly. Is there a little one to Camille? <laughs> oh dear, now I've spoken to him, he's probably going to jump up on my knee. So as you can see here, now it's sliding all the way. Okay, so we can move it all the way down to have a really nice short necklace. Like so. And so I'm going to uh, sort these out for you in a minute. Or you can have a very long necklace and it's just a case of pulling that up. And you could have it as a, I mean, this is incredibly long, but I wasn't concentrating on sizes. Okay, so that is your sliding clasp, okay? Now then, sorting out the ends. Now, I am a little bit dubious to show you this because I'm going to use fire. Um, I'm going to melt the ends of them. Um, I wanted to show you it just so that I can show you how to hopefully do it very, very carefully. Now, I am going to use a lighter. I'm going to burn off the ends. Now, you could, if you're not comfortable using your lighter or burning the ends, if you have a thread zapper, um, then that would work beautifully as well. Thread zappers just have a heated element in them. Um, if you do not and you're not comfortable using any of the heat and melting it, 
then you could add a bead onto the end, just like you would with sort of the end of a macrame necklace or bracelet. And I'm also going to do this for you tomorrow. Add a bead on if you've got one that will have a large enough hole to fit onto here. And then you could just tie a knot and you could make it like a decorative feature. OK, um, Leanne, question. Will this work with thicker, thicker cord like a shoelace or does it have to be this thickness? You can do it with any size, but it has to it can't doesn't work so well on things like a waxed cord because it doesn't have the slide. I don't think a shoelace, although it would it would work, you're not going to get that gliding movement. So moving it down and shortening it and sliding it isn't going to be as smooth. Um, so you do want something that's got that sort of softer, smoother edge to it so that you just get that easy manoeuvrability. OK, so um, going to take this one. And then I'm going to cut that down just to leave a couple of millimetres. Now, I have um, one of the larger lighters. So these are the ones that you would use to sort of light a gas cooker and such like. I prefer working with these because you don't actually get um, a, a proper flame at the end of it. I'm then just going to use that to melt the end of this. Now, can you see I'm pulling everything out of the way? If I melt on the inside of this or my sliding co uh, cord, this isn't going to work at all. Uh, tried that kit when written in with written instructions and made a mess. Thank you. Your demo, you make it look so simple. Sure, I could do it now. Oh, Sam, you're more than welcome. Um, okay, so I've got the heat on the end. I'm just going to move that in. Can you see that it starts to melt down? Once that's melted down, I then just take something like my scissors or my metal ruler and I'm just going to dab that in. OK, and that will now give me a nice neat finish. I've burnt it and it will still slide. OK, do it on the other side. Pull everything as far out of the way as you can. You don't want to cut it too tight. You do want to leave some space. And then melting it in. Sorry, I'm quiet. I was concentrating. Didn't want to burn myself. Okay, and then you've got your lovely sliding clasp as well. Super, super simple, really effective, gives you a lovely finish. Now, this is also great if anybody has um, metal allergies. So if you have super sensitive skin, I've got no findings on here. So it now means also if you if you suffer with things like arthritis or your fingers and your hands aren't too good, you can now put a necklace on really simply um, because you just pop it on up and over your neck, pull it down nice and tight. And that is then going to shrink that down into a lovely necklace. Super, super simple. And then, of course, I've got no findings, no clasps and no metal. It's only the lovely ceramic beads and my cord. And then if you wanted to, you could make it a lot longer. Just um, slide that up. Wrong knot. Slide that up and then you can um, remove it. So even if you're not using it for a multifunctional piece of necklace for different lengths, it might just be that it's easier to put on and off yourself. Super, super simple but very effective, especially when you're using lovely beads like these as well. Um, totally beads. We definitely need to make a montage of the concentration faces. Please PM some of us to us and we'll put it together. <laughs> I absolutely love this. Okay, so everybody send your threading a needle or uh, bead weaving, concentration face, wire wrapping, concentration face. <laughs> And we're going to have a montage of all of us concentrating. That's hilarious. See, now Kitty and I are going to be very exposed because ordinarily you don't see our faces. Who knows what kind of faces we pull? Um, ordinarily, the camera is facing down. So, oh gosh. OK, now you'll see us. Um, that's hilarious. Brilliant. OK, guys, I really hope you enjoyed t today's tutorial. I'm going to put my um, longer one back on. I just need to finish this pendant when I get a chance. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be doing a little bit more of an evening wear piece. Well, no, actually, it, it could be day wear as well. I know I wear it during the day, um, but I'm going to be using some beautiful large oval crystals. So if the more sort of earthy and ceramic look isn't your finish, 
Tomorrow I have some beautiful crystal ovals, so something perhaps a little bit more glitz and glam. Um, don't forget we have amazing bundles available today. So with your ceramic beads, they are down to £3.15 a strand, which I just think is phenomenal value for money. Um, like I said, you could probably even get, if you want to do individual pendants like these, they'd make beautiful Christmas presents, birthday gifts, great for selling your jewellery as well, especially with um, a cord like this, because your, your price of materials are minimal. And then it does also mean that it's one size fits all which of course is going to be great. Um, individual necklaces like these, you're going to get, I can't remember exactly how many beads are on the strand, 11. So you could make 11 necklaces out of your three pound beads, which I think is brilliant. Remember, we've got all those beautiful colours as well, your gorgeous browns, your earths, your greys, your brown, uh, greens, gorgeous and then obviously your rattel cord now i'm going to be using this a lot over the next few coming uh, days and weeks uh, probably even months um a lot of macrame as well which is great and um, you've got a six color pack in fact let me show you it i didn't even open my other colors but in all of your colors you have this beautiful deep aubergine you have a lovely light blue You've got your white, which I'm desperate to use actually. I might even do that with the greens because that would look beautiful. You've got the lovely gray and then you have more of a lilac-y purple as well. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, making macrame bracelets with these two together would be gorgeous. Um, I love the tassel one. Thank you for your fab tutorial. You are more than welcome. Elaine, love macrame. Oh, you definitely need to get hold of this one then. It's normally £33, down to 22 You get 250 metres of your cord. I'm lying, you get 270 metres of your cord. So that is going to last you a long time. Doris, bye Sarah, still being naughty. Can we have more of your laughter? Oh, bless you. Yeah, you've all cheered me up this morning. I didn't feel very well first thing this morning, so we've had a good old giggle, and I can't wait to see all your concentration faces. Um, Diane says, must go upstairs and see what I have. Yes, run, because I don't have a feeling that these are going to last for very long. Um, and then, of course, you've got your tassel caps as well. 50 pence for the large one, 30 pence for your smaller ones. I think they're amazing value for money, and it's going to give you just that beautiful little interest in either earrings or your necklaces as well. Join me to tomorrow i'm going to be here we're going to do a little bit more uh, knots um i've shown you how easy it can be nice and simple but very effective new sliding clasps tomorrow i'm going to show you another take on that attaching cords using them as tassels with beautiful crystals it's all going to go on tomorrow 10 o'clock i will hope to see you all then take care everyone have a lovely friday